Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third video. Go to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days for today's third video day. 10 is going to take us to the 14th of January. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with extended GFS and ECM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at SV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which will get us to the end of January. I'll get to all that for you in a moment. Just say that first video we say was our 7 a.m. Uh, upload. We've also uh, released the EC 30 day slash 6 weeks look at. So uh, have a look at that. Uh, focusing on the weather for the UK and the rest of Europe as well. This is the final video of today. Please like, share, subscribe on all our videos. Thank you so much for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. Right, so we'll start off with the latest temperature observations from XC Weather. Colder weather is digging in. We had an exceptionally warm start to the year. New Year 2021-2022 uh, was a record-breakingly hot New Year. Um, temperatures have gone a lot colder now. So we've still got 10 degrees flashing away in the far southern part of the country. Lid Airport is at 10 degrees. And in the west, it's still reasonably uh, mild there. Norfolk at 4 degrees, for example. Sydney Bridge at 4. Um, but it gets colder into the Midlands. So we've got uh, just 2 degrees at uh, Western Aerodrome. Um, 4 going northwards to uh, Nottingham. 3 at Topcliffe. And we've actually got uh, freezing ice day uh, going on further north. So we've got an ice day flashing away just there at Warcop, 0 degrees. And uh, north was that still to Aviemore, 0 degrees there, 0 degrees at a Boyne, and 0 at Tullock Bridge. So definitely temperatures got a lot colder, you know, over the course of the last uh, few hours. And this cold weather will be with us for the next couple of days. Brief cold snap, and then we're back into uh, rather milder conditions um, by the time we get through to the end of the week and the weekend. Well, it will still be cold. Uh, sectors coming in from the Atlantic as well. But yeah, a little bit of a northerly slap uh, today, giving a, a slightly more seasonal feel. And uh, just a reminder that it is January rather than um, <laughs> sort of May, as you might have thought, on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Central temperature is continuing to un unravel that extraordinarily hot opening day. So uh, now we are standing at 10.5. Uh, that is provisional to the 3rd of uh, January to yesterday. Uh, 7.1 degrees above average. So uh, you remember for New Year's Day, it was over 12 degrees. Absolutely extraordinary. We have brought that down by about a degree over the, well, about two degrees over the past couple of days and one degree uh, a day on the second and third. That's going to accelerate. That drop will accelerate over the next couple of days with this uh, cold weather. So, uh, so yeah, that will come down a lot, I think, by the time we get through to the end of the week, although it will probably still be very substantially above average, probably three or four degrees above average, uh, even then. But, um, but yeah, that's going to reduce a lot over the coming few days as we continue to unravel the very, very hot New Year's uh, day that we had. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're looking at uh, London today uh so um we're starting off uh, still about average actually with the upper air temperatures for london right now but they are on the way down remember on new year's day it was up here it was at 10 degrees so really big drop in temperature take place over the last two or three days and uh, we are going to be going cold on average over the next couple of days actually below average temperatures uh then lasting right the way through you know the first week of january generally um although there will be some warmer and cooler sex came through but generally it is quite a coolish to the first week of January. A big push up in the temperature just there as we go into the second week of January. That's probably associated with high pressure building up from the Azores. And then from mid month on, we're still a lot of scatter. So uh, we've got uh, warmer on some members up here. We've got cold on some members down here. Some of them really going quite cold indeed, actually. One or two outliers dropping down into the freezer. They are outliers, but, um, you know, there is a bit of a cooling trend, I think, as we go into the second half of January. We can see that from the ensemble mean, which is the white line, beginning to drop away uh, into the into the second half of January. That's a very extended range, though, uh, bear in mind. So, um, you know, uh, that is unreliable, unreliable time frame stuff. But uh, nevertheless, we may see a little bit of a colder snap, perhaps into the second half of the month. Precipitation-wise, quite a bit of dry weather coming up, actually, around the middle part of the month. With this warm up, that's high pressure dominated. Before that, unsettled, quite zonal. And then after that, maybe getting a little bit more unsettled again. And that's interesting because that's where it's turning perhaps a bit colder. So there might be a little bit of wind potential uh, with that, maybe. 
terms of the sea level pressure. For London, we look like that. So uh, we've got relatively low pressure at the moment and over the next few days. We're going to lift the pressure up quite a lot, though, as we get into the uh, second week of the month. That's high pressure building up the resource. And then maybe a little bit of a reduction pressure as we go into the second half of the month. In terms of two meter temperatures, we look like this. So uh, we're going colder, of course, over the next few days. This is our little cold snap showing up just here. Get some milder, though, as we get into uh, next week in particular. It could get very mild, actually, for a couple of days again. Next week, temperature going into double digits. Not as high as over New Year, though. And then maybe a little bit of a drop in the temperature taking place as we move into the middle and second half of the month. Again, there are one or two. There are outliers, one or two ensemble members that are dipping down into the freezer uh, after mid-month. Snow Row is looking like that. So, uh, you know, not much going on in terms of stuff, though. Maybe a little bit on the back edge of the cold front's pushing southwards at the moment. Don't think that's going to amount to too much. Uh, and then no snow, uh, you know, uh, until, until middle of the month. Maybe some snow spikes, though, appearing in the second half of the month. That's London, of course. You go somewhere like Aberdeen, further north. A little bit more in way of snow there at the moment due to snow shower being brought in on the northern wind. Again, it's completely snow-free, really, through the second week of January. And then, uh, in, you know, signs that we might be bring the snow spikes back into the second half of the month if we get that cold snap. This is Birmingham, all much of a muchness, really. So, um, a bit of a cold snap at the moment. It'll be a little bit of winteriness around, but not much. Completely snow-free through the second week of January. And then maybe second half of the month, third week of the month, I suppose, um, the snow spikes begin to uh, appear a little bit more. Temperature anomaly is on the 4th to 12th of January, a little bit below average actually, more particularly so in northern areas. It's going to be a cooler week coming up than we've had for a little while. And precipitation anomaly is from the 4th to the 12th of January, are looking like that. So uh, a bit uh, driving average down in the south, and it's just a little bit wetter than average up in the far northwest. Related with a map from EarthNorthSchool.net shows that we're drawing down northerly winds today, which is something we haven't seen for a little while. Remember on New Year's Day, we was bringing the wind up from uh, Africa and south of the Canary Islands and the Azores. Well, that's completely changed around now. And uh, now we're drawing down a northerly from the Arctic. So we can see that pushing through the country and uh, down into northern parts of France. Have we dragged this up or down a little bit? And see that this is quite a long fetch northerly actually it does have true arctic origins in terms of the source of the air mass up here and uh, that really is pushing down into the western side of europe so of course that is the reason that things have gone uh, quite significantly colder right so let's start going through some chart data then we're going to have a look at the uh uk met euro first of all so well this is friday so wet and windy weather will sweep across the country on thursday there might be some hill snow with that in the north that'll get out of the way by friday when it's just cold and showery uh westerly wind and then over the weekend just keep it pretty cold and unsettled really uh low pressure in off the Atlantic, it will be in further bouts of rain and showers uh the air is originating from like south of greenland so it will be quite a cool weekend as well although by the beginning of next week we start to drag up a milder southwesterly wind so early next week will turn milder particularly in southern areas um rain in the north turning a little bit dry though down in the south it will be unsettled i have not got the icon up but what we can do with that is go here and then go to icon there and look at midnight icon uh run and this is how it so uh in 72 hours time again uh friday cold showery westerly winds some of those showers could turn wintry saturday another area of low pressure will move in off the atlantic that will bring further rain perhaps a bit of an increase in temperature rather cold and showery as we go through into sunday and then into monday we start to pick up this milder southwesterly wind particularly for more southern areas of course, of next week, this is this time next week, uh, Tuesday. Again, look at in the south, still quite cool and showery up in the north. And so, as we go with icon to uh, midday on Tuesday, 11th of January, in a week's time, uh, we're looking just generally uh, westerly, so so still zonal and uh, rather shower, particularly in northern and western areas. Right, that's that one done. Let's have a look at the uh, GFS midnight run then. So, uh, again, uh, Friday uh, looks rather cold and showery, westerly winds, and stays unsettled into weekend. Miss low pressure diving in from the northwest might deliver 
a little bit of snow to northern areas, rain, of course, further south. And then early next week, we try to reach high pressure to our east, actually. The uh, GFS Midnight Run just try and pull off a Scandinavian high, but it's days and numbered with such a deep area of low pressure in the uh, North Atlantic. So we just bring in milder, wet and windy weather again through the early part of next week. And the attempt to build a Scandinavian high just retreats back. Uh, with its tail between its legs into western parts of Russia. And then through the course of next week, we strengthen the Azores high. We saw that in the ensemble graph. So, uh, you know, high pressure will start to strengthen to our south. Low pressure to the north. That's going to drag in a very mild air mass from the west and from the southwest. But it will turn drier, particularly for southern areas. Day 10 looks like that. Very mild with high pressure around the Bay of Biscay drawing in that uh, west southwesterly wind. In the more extended range, uh, we uh, turn things a little bit colder and more unsettled into the second half of the month with winds pulling in to the northwest. But most of the cold with that is actually across the northern parts of Europe. GFS 6Z again looks cool, showery on Friday, quite cold and showery on Friday, and a relatively cold and unsettled weekend to come. Early next week again, there is an attempt to build high pressure from uh, Western Russia into Scandinavia, but it's uh, very quickly defeated by all of this low pressure out to the northwest. For any attempt to build that high pressure over Scandi is, uh, is, uh, is, is brought to nothing. Uh, and the high pressure that does attempt to build just retreats back into Western Russia as the Atlantic is just too buoyant and too much energy uh, with the polar vortex. Up to day 10, we build high pressure a little bit more strongly with the 6 said. So um, that might allow a little bit of frost, especially for England and Wales, through the second week of, uh, of January. It's not as mild and zonal and, and, you know, westerly as the midnight run was. So that would allow a little bit more frost in England and Wales. The Scotland and Northern Ireland probably still quite uh, quite mobile, though, so, so it would be mild up there. In more extreme range, the 6 a starts to build this high pressure out to our west and pulls in a colder northerly wind. So the 6 a does turn colder into the second half of uh, January, this is 16th of January, 300 hours away, it's a very long way out, but it starts pulling minus 10 cells ice firm into northern areas. And uh, then we keep on the cold side of that area of high pressure, actually, right the way up to the end of 6 they generally centred just to our west, allowing winds to be coming in from a northwesterly direction. So a little bit colder with the GFS 6 there for the second half of January. GM talking like this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit smash the like button. Make sure you're subbed to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's so we think uh, GM again looking quite cold and showery on Friday. We keep it unsettled and quite chilly through the weekend. Then early next week, we draw up this milder air from the southwest, particularly for more southern and western areas. And pretty mild week coming up next week for most parts of the country. Although there is a bit of an influence from high pressure in the south that might allow some frost. And fog down there, but certainly northern there is looking very mild with that west or southwesterly wing. As far as we get to today, 10, 14th of January. And then uh, finally, we've got the ECM that looks like that, rather cold and showery on Friday. Pretty unsettled and quite cold weekend coming up. Early next week, it turns milder, especially so in southern areas. And eventually, high pressure does get more influential. This will be a cloudy high, so it's building up from the south. I think it have a lot of cloud underneath it, so we're into anticyclonic gloom, probably, for England and Wales. But if sky's clear, there could be some frost and fog for England and Wales, but Scotland and Northern Ireland drawing up this really mild south wind, then, uh, of course, uh, there it will be very, very mild. But it will be drier next week. Uh, this will be precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometio.com. So snow showers into the north at the moment, a little bit of cold south is taking place. We've got wet turbid coming in off the Atlantic on Thursday. Some of that might deliver some snow for northern areas and on the leading edge. So there could be a little bit of snow around on Thursday, but we'll very quickly turn to rain. And it will be rain throughout down in the south. Into those wintry showers then on Friday in western areas for more wet weather piles in for the Atlantic into the weekend. Other bouts of rain pushing through over weekend. And then next week it turns increasingly dry as high pressure builds up from the southwest, but there will be wet weather towards the northwest. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 14th of January. 20 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure. More or less right over top of the country. That would, uh, at the very least, give the chance of a little bit of frost and fog. And 17 just here, very similar actually. So actually within the ensembles, um, 
be, uh, within the ECM ensembles, uh, the, the majority of options have that high pressure building up a little bit more strongly than the operational run does, because the 14 just here, that does include the operational run, that's, uh, uh they're, they're the 14 that have the high pressure a little bit further southwards, with the low pressure up here, so that is a milder sort of scenario, and, and a more mobile scenario, especially for the north, but if you put the 20 there, together with the 17 there, actually, the majority option within the ECM ensembles, interestingly, is have that high pressure rather more centrally located over the top of the country, um, you know, around day 10, which would be a colder position and would at the very least allow for a little bit of frost and fog. It's not a cold ridge, it's because it's built up from the Azores, so initially it will have a lot of mild air associated with probably a lot of cloud, but if we can get that high pressure centrally located over the country, that does at the very least allow the prospect of a little bit of frost and fog. In two weeks' time, these are the uh, options that we've got. Gets us to the 19th of January. 22 members of the ECM ensembles pull the high pressure out to the west. And uh, with low pressure to the east, we would start to bring in something a bit colder from the north with that. 20 with high pressure centred over and just to the west of the coast. That's mainly dry, but would be milder with winds in from a westerly direction. And then 9 again with high pressure to our west, low pressure to our east. And winds coming around the high from a chilly direction, but maybe a little bit more influence from the Atlantic uh, with those nine. So, um, you know, that's a little bit milder, a little bit less cold. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's going to be a case of where that high pressure goes. Where the high pressure goes, as I said in yesterday's video, is going to be critical, really, for what happens into the second half of the month. CFSB2 finally beats the 500 millibar heights, breaking down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 4th to the 10th of January. The coming week will have high pressure just pulled out to our west, low pressure over and to the north and east of the country. So, you know, rather unsettled and becoming a little bit colder as well with time. Uh, week 2 is the 11th, 17th of January. A bit more influence from that high pressure building up from the Azores. So that turns the south drier anyway. Low pressure up to the north. It is still, though, a mild scenario. Although, if high pressure goes far enough north, it could allow for a little bit of frost and fog. And then, uh, week three takes us back to very unsettled weather. This is the 18th, 24th of January. Low pressure back in to our northwest. High pressure to our west southwest. Winds in from a westerly direction. So, obviously, that's mild, wet, and windy. And then uh, week four is going to be the 25th to the 31st of January. Again, low pressure dominating to the north, high pressure to the west and to the southwest. And winds remain from that mild westerly direction. No sign of winter there. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please can smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And uh, drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. It's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much. We're doing this, you guys, weather this. Right, we're done then. Uh, so that's it for today's videos. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have 7am forecast. USA forecast is back tomorrow. A long the 10 to 14 day as well. Keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this video, it's all for now. And thanks for watching.